Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are going fishing in crystal clear water for giant smallmouth. We just caught that six pounder before we could even turn on the camera. We're going finesse fishing. The water's crystal. Come on. As I'm trolling motoring in here to start fishing this spot, essentially what we're doing today, we are on a brand new lake. We have never, well, we're on Lake Michigan, but we've never been in this section of Lake Michigan. We put the boat in the water, dropped the trolling motor, saw a great big smallmouth, started following her. She was cruising a flat, led her with a tube, and she ate it. That smallmouth was 6.06 .06 pounds. Hopefully, that is a sign of things to come. We're about to find out. The water is so clear, we can see bottom in 30 plus feet, so we're running really light line. The fish, hopefully, are going to target finesse baits. We're gonna stick to a Ned rig and a tube. There are fish up on beds in the area. The water temps, 60 degrees, but those aren't the fish that we're looking for. We're looking for those larger females that are just moving in. So hopefully we'll be able to, I see one right here on the end of this tree. Hopefully we'll be able to find more of these great big fish. Maybe you can see her out there on the tip of that tree. We'll make long casts with a light line and get these fish. Let's see if this one will bite before she sees me. I can already see another one. I think we've timed this area perfect. See her out there? I've got about a 30 foot lead on her. I mean, you know she can see it. I'm just gonna fish it 30 feet from her and see if she wants to jam over there. She's all over it. Oh yeah, she's hot. Got her. That was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Wow. It's a fat football free spawn smallmouth. Hate that tube. Oh, it's big. Yeah. Did you see that one out there at all? He's no, I blind, blind huh? past the bat. Let him fight you. That's a nice one. Looks like a battle scarred fish from the time. Got him. Oh, yeah. They are on that tube. No. That's just blind casting out here. Wow, choked it. Good work, babe. Look at him.
it up. It's only seven pounds. Nice fish. Nice one. Ate that little tube. Awesome. Beautiful, dark one. It's amazing how many different colors smallmouth can turn. Just incredible. This is so fun. Another nice one. Sierra, look. What do you think? <laughs> trying to come out. What do you think, Sierra? You like him? Awesome. Missile Ned bomb right there. Oh, another one. Good job. You know, you need a nut. How far out? 
pretty fish. It's dark. Gonna need the net. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty far out. Oh, he's a fat These are one. Blown. Wow. They're big. Oh, yes. <gasps> Check it out. <laughs> Look at that. When you get into these clear water situations where you're casting huge distances out over open flats, a tube and a Ned rig are some of the best ways to catch these fish. Of course, we'd love to catch them winding a Kitek or throwing a dark sleeper or any number of other things, but a lot of times that stuff shuts down and you've got to turn to finesse. We don't turn to a drop shot because we're trying to cover water. We're trying to stay ahead of those fish and we just can't do that effectively with a drop shot. That's where the tube and the Ned rig come in. The Ned in recent years has exploded, you guys know that. We've got a variety of different baits that we throw for that scenario, and we constantly shoot videos of that stuff, underwater comparisons. But down in the video description, we'll link the exact Ned bait that we've been throwing today and the gear that we're throwing it on. But what I really wanted to focus on for a minute is tubes, and then we'll get back to fishing. Tubes are so often overlooked. So I wanted to take a minute to kind of explain the differences in what we're doing. So a normal tube head, I say normal, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but the tube heads that we typically use look like this. One of these two varieties right here. Really skinny, Heads. And again, we'll link you the, the exact ones. This one's lead, this one's tungsten. We use them pretty interchangeably. I've talked in the past about how I like a really skinny tube head because when I'm fishing for big fish, a lot of times that tube will slide up the line and just leave the jig head in the fish's mouth. And I can see how they're hooked, how well they're hooked, whether or not I think I can drag them to the boat if I've got to baby them. So I really like that and the tungsten is smaller so if i'm going to heavier sizes and i go to tungsten i can still stay thin and that will work but typically lead is fine because it's up inside of the tube so it's really not helping you get better sensitivity the tube body itself the plastic is what's making bottom contact so that's what i normally throw today when we realized we were gonna get around some really big fish, and I'm glad I have these with me. A completely different box. It's not even my, my tube box at all. Over in my jig heads, in here with my little swim bait heads, are the tactical finesse head, guppy heads, okashiras, all that stuff. I've got these guys. This is a Blade Runner. It's, it's a little swim bait head that he makes, but look how small this is. Let me compare it to like a tactical finesse head. See how much smaller the profile is, even than a head built for finesse fishing? I went to this when I saw that big fish were a reality today because these are not shaped like a tube head at all. It's not for that, it's for a swim bait, but it's got such a small hook for the weight of the head, 90 degree line tie, and that hook is stout really really stout so that let me rip one of these open that is what i've got hiding inside my tube today because i'm getting away with a heavier tube head but it's still a tiny little hook but it's strong so i know if you know if i'm setting on one and two pounders no big deal but when you set on a five or six pound smallmouth and they're just ripping on you, that heavier hook goes a long way. Now I'm only throwing seven pound line. So it can't be like a jig hook, it can't be a big flipping hook. It's in between. So this was a not even made for this, but it's worked so well today that I wanted to tell you about it. That is called an inhaler. That's what that jig head is called. And again, down in the video description, we'll link it so you don't have to go searching for it. But look how well it sits inside the profile of that fat tube. It's perfect. So that has just worked wonders today. And I wanted to tell you about it. Now the tubes themselves, 
you know, there's two basic versions. You've got, there's one, there's another. A few different brands that we use, we just kind of mix between them, but a standard tournament style tube versus a fat tube or a double dipped tube. Even the stumpy little guys. But those standard tournament tubes, one day, that is the tube. It's the only thing you want to throw. The next day, they're on that fat tube and just smashing that thing. And it's the only thing you want to throw. So if you want to try tubes, get both. And the reason why I say that is because on any given lake that we show up to on any given day, one or the other will be firing. It just seems to change. So if you want to try the tube bite, Make sure that you're equipped with both because one will far outfish the other and it may change. So just some tips for you guys. Again, like every video, all the gear will be down in the description so you don't have to hunt for it. And with that, let's get back to fishing. You want to net him? You want to net him, honey? Come here. Get the net quick. Get it. Put it over the side. Yep. Get the net. Okay. Okay, put the... Yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it all by yourself. I'm not helping. Lift him up. Yeah. Lift him up. Lift him. You Whoa. got him. Yeah. All right, let me get him. Go to mom. Good job, Sierra. You did the net. You did so good. <laughs> I want to eat the Ned. Net a four and a half pound smallie. Oh, Good job, oh, Sierra. There it is. There. Okay. Let's, let's put the net down. Put the net right here. Nice one on the tube. We'll let that one go. No. <laughs> so, guys, one tip for you. Wow. There's jet skiers all over us. You wouldn't know it was a fairly cold day up here. You notice we're using really high-end gear for all of this fishing. One tip. Now, for every category, there's a budget version. So one guy's budget is not another guy's budget. But for somebody that wants that ultra high-end feel, if you're a smallmouth guy, if you like that dialed in, whether it's largemouth or smallies, that truly dialed in finesse feel, yeah, the Stella is an incredible reel. But I've talked about this reel a couple times now. This is the Twin Power. It got almost no discussion when it came out. The Twin Power is like a budget version of the Stella. It's still not a cheap reel, but it's like almost half the price of a Stella. And it is so dialed. I mean, we're out here fishing giant smallmouth and I'm using that Twin Power today and it is just awesome. So at every price point, you know, whether you're looking at 50 bucks or 100 bucks or 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks, there are unique items, one reel that's better than another at that price. It's got a better feel, it's smoother, it lasts longer. A rod that's more sensitive. There's always those ones that just seem to do better than what you pay for them. And I do like that one.
looks like as good a fish as any to end it on. Got him? Yeah. So much fun on the finesse gear today. Nice fish. Thanks. There you go. Guys, we had such changing conditions today. When we got out here, the water was a mirror. We could see fish 100, 150 feet away in 10 to 15 feet of water. But as that sun came up, that was gone. We wanted to make those bomber casts on those pre-spawn fish that were working rock edges, coming back onto sand flats. And we got to do that. We caught some really nice fish. But once that wind kicked up, can't do that anymore. So we moved up onto sand flats and just started fan casting and finished out the day up here. All in all, we caught a pile of fish. It was fun. Down in the video description, like we said, we'll link you all the gear we were using, some budget recommendations as well, some gear that is better or smoother than the price point that it's at. Because again, if you're trying to catch big smallmouth or big anything on light tackle, spending the money to get a really smooth drag, to get a sensitive rod makes a big difference. So we'll try and give you some different options that will really help there. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.